Hello, everyone. My name is Jennifer Perello, and I'm the Director of Content here at the American Hospital Association. Welcome to today's sponsored webinar, How Smart Hospitals Can Play a Pivotal Role in the Smart and Connected Healthcare System of the Future. We, we're extremely honored to have Philip sponsor and lead this presentation and discussion today. But before we get started, just a few rules of engagement to highlight. You can access audio by listening through your computer speakers or through your phone. If you're having issues, you should be able to access the toolbar at the bottom to switch to either phone audio or computer audio. Please note that you are in listen-only listen mode through this presentation. This webinar is being recorded and it will be made available on our website. Throughout the webinar, if you have any questions for our speakers, please enter them into the Q&A pod, which you can find at the bottom of your screen in the Zoom toolbar. I'll do a moderated Q&A session at the end with our panelists. If you have any technical questions or comments in general, feel free to use the chat pod. Please note that all participants on the webinar can view the chat pod, but it will not be included in the, in the recording. Finally, after our webinar is over today, we'll have an evaluation that will pop up on your browser. We really value your feedback, so please take a moment to complete it. Now, I would like to introduce today's speakers. Edgar Van Zolen leads the global performance analytics and digital transformation practice that connects the dots within the informatic informatics domain to enable customers and partners to better understand their past, improve the present, and work together to predict the future. He is an expert in leading, in leading change, strategy definition, solution development, digital transformation, and agile and lean methodologies. Angus Cameron brings over 25 years of healthcare consultancy consulting experience to his role as an integrated solutions provider. His successful implementation of process improvement programs, clinical programs, and digital health transformations have helped customers around the globe achieve significant improvement to their operational, clinical, and ex experiential outcomes. Before I turn it over to our speakers, just a reminder to, if you have any questions, um, to ask the panelists after their presentation, please put them in the chat pod and I will help moderate a Q&A at the end of their presentation. And now, Edgar and Angus, please take it away. Thank you very much, uh, Jennifer. So good morning, good afternoon, uh, everybody. Uh, we're delighted to be here today and together with Angus, we'll do our best to share our learnings and insights uh, and as much as possible, so when it comes to smart hospitals, so that by the end of the session, uh, everybody has, you know, a good value of uh, time spent. If we look at the agenda for today's session, um, I first kick it off and talk a bit about the needs and trends around digitization of healthcare, around smart hospitals, and how does the investment landscape look like, and particularly on around the adoption of digital healthcare. I'll hand it over to Angus, who talks more about the smart hospital development and digital transformation, and particularly the elements that are needed to really drive those transformations properly, which of course goes beyond the technology access. And, and last but not least, we'll share a few examples of smart hospital implementations of customers and partners that we've worked with over the, the course of the last few, few years. And then we'll close it off with uh, a summary and then, of course, uh, Q&A, where we're looking forward to your questions and, and remarks so we can uh, deep dive into, into those. So without further ado, um, where I would like to start is we're getting a lot of questions all around the globe. Uh, from Philips, we, we, we operate in almost every country around the globe. And what we see is that there's a huge trend on a very high level on the level of questions that our customers are asking us. They might all look the same, but ultimately when you start deep diving them, there's a, there's a nuance difference where ultimately if you want to solve some of these questions, you need to have a tailored solution or, or a different combination of solutions to really solve those challenges. So basically the type of questions we're getting is from on the left, how can I enhance the performance and growth of my hospital? 
how can I manage increased disease burden and health inequity to something very simple is how can I reduce the cost base of my hospitals because we're, we're burning too much cash and we're, we're losing money every year in the way we want to deliver care. And some of the more complex challenges we also see, which is very much on enterprise level as well, is what resources allow me to manage care more efficiently and effectively in order to improve the length of stay and discharge or move even patients to another care setting. So one thing we know for sure is that care will move to less expensive care settings. And also care will also move closer to patients and will become more patient centric. So healthcare is actually late to the party when it comes to adopting digital technologies and particularly integrating them within the daily operations. So ultimately what we look for is how can we all make it work together? And our belief is that the future of healthcare is an intelligent system of care. So not focusing around one location, which is called the hospital, but, but with different, different care access points. So we are focused on care transformation and the digital solutions required to create an intelligent system of care that truly integrates and connects care across these different care settings. And some of our solutions and focus areas are listed in each of the access, uh, access or care points. In a few minutes, we will provide an overview of our vision for smart hospitals, or how we like to call it, a smart system of care, and how we can support enterprise care collaboration, virtual and remote care. And personally, when I think of the future of healthcare, I think of care for each individual. You're having care your way you want it to be delivered because you're different than me and, and I'm different than my next door neighbor. So we'll see a rapid increase of access points from simple texting to video to retail and ambulatory care settings, in addition to hospitals care and post-acute care. So behind each of these access points, there are going to be digital technologies needed that remove the friction from yeah, different care settings and allowing patients to receive high quality care anytime and anywhere. And of course, which in turn also will impact the staff experience and in a positive note, so that they have more fun in delivering care and have the feeling they can add much more value uh, to the patients that they treat. And it all comes down in how do you facilitate the orchestration of care? Because if you really want to improve the quality of care, remove the friction and leverage technology that is out there and available. You also got to look at the data that is available. So on one side, you have the clinical insights and the other side, you have the operational insights. So let's all assume we have access to all the clinical data from imaging, uh, 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 from the bedside when we monitor people and all the vital signs from acute care and maybe even from the home. And on the other hand, we have the operational insights. How do I manage the flow in my hospital? How do I manage the patients? Which patients need more attention than others? Do, are my resources available? Can I find my IV pump? Is the staff planning, is that still accurate enough based on the demand that's upcoming today, tomorrow, or even next week? So if you want to combine all of those together, and it sounds easier or it looks easier than it actually is, because only on one side, you have the people aspect, the lens you have to look through. There's a team of people physicians and nurses and an operations team, and of course the patients that come and go, and not even at set times, but they just come and go. And the other side, you have the system and process that you wanna, you wanna optimize and make it more efficiently. And in the middle, you have the technology that bridges it all together. So if you look at it from a people perspective, how do we empower clinicians, staff and patients? How do you enhance multidisciplinary collaboration or improve the staff experience? And if you look at the system and process on the other hand, how do you standardize and leverage leading practice processes? How do you seamless connect the care? And how do you leverage the business intelligence that is out there? And how can you make more informed decisions? So all the technology that needs to be the glue to, that sticks it all together. So when we then think about the transformation and of course, smart digital healthcare in North America, and if we wanna compare a little bit more on some global statistics from an adoption perspective, we'll get a kind of a nice view on the real why reason why there's a, there's a big need to really change and, 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 and transform the way care is being delivered and leverage these technologies in a way that hasn't been done before. So if you look at smart hospital, and if you look at healthcare 4.0, there's different interpretation of what it is, what's included, what's excluded. Because ultimately what we see is that a long overdue digital transformation in healthcare is ongoing. We believe that technology is affecting industries today, if how we shop as individuals, how we bank, how we travel, 
but it just had to make a real impact in how it how it's being received in healthcare. And for example, the adoption of digital health technologies for diagnosis and treatment has been very modest. Clinical and operational data for the most part is still locked and very siloed. And of course, electronic medical records are still not part of routine care in many countries. We even have countries where it's very manual. They still work with a lot of printouts. So for a long time, the health industry has been unable to close the quality, access and financial gaps. And however, in the age of digital transformation and of course, industry 4.0, they're paving the way for exciting and new opportunities to change the way people develop and receive digital health and new type of care services. We truly believe at Philips that we're at the dawn of a foundational change, a pivotal change into the new era of smart and connected healthcare. And if we move digital healthcare forward, we need to look at the landscape, you know, take a little bit of a, a wider view. So we take one step back. So outside of the hospital, we see there's a huge investment going on right now already in digital technologies, like a 23% increase compound annual growth rate in terms of investment in smart hospital type of technologies in North America, which by, 20, by 2030 estimate is about 147 billion. That's a lot of money to invest in digital technologies to get to a vision or realize a smart hospital. What also what we see is that 76% is the percentage of US healthcare professionals who are currently already use digital health technology or mobile health apps. And if you basically look at where we are today, 171 billion is the global artificial intelligence market, which is expected to reach even, you know, it's expected to reach even more uh, going forward in 2025. So if we look at it today, where we are, and, and one of the, the, the interesting research we found is that in 2020, Bain and company did a, did a research and they in, in, did a questionnaire around healthcare leaders. And less than 1% of healthcare leaders today, or at least in 2020, they felt that their digital investments have delivered on expectations. So if you look at these huge numbers on, on the screen right now and then realize it's great that all these investments have been done. But for some reason, they haven't leveraged, they haven't returned the investment. So how can we make sure that the investments that are being made are being leveraged so that the care improves, the quality improves, the efficiency improves, the costs go down. And then, of course, the experience goes up for both the patients and for the staff. And that, I would say, is a global and global challenge. And if we then look at it from a global challenge, if you look at the current landscape, and this overview comes from, from HIMSS, a research being done based on the adoption rate of DM, so the digital imaging adoption model. So the landscape of digital adoption, it shows the investments and capabilities from, uh, from the DIAM scale, on one side, very limited, and the other side, to the right-hand side, advanced. So what we are seeing is large investments in countries that are advancing and also will be leapfrogging. And I would say, although this is a maturity model focused around imaging initially, what we see is only one dimension of digitization. It does tell us very much how connected and digitally organized or disorganized hospitals are. So if you look at it from a, from a global perspective on the left-hand side, you see, you know, Vietnam, Indonesia at this point at stage zero, very limited image management. And if you then look on the right-hand side, where on stage number six, you see North America, United States of America. You see South Korea you know, leading the pack on clinical analytics and AI. You see the Netherlands. And personally, I come from the Netherlands. We're at stage five. You know, we consider ourselves to be a very modern, very leading, uh, leading market. But if you see, we're not even leading it. And that is today. So you see a mixed match around the different stages of the DIAM, the adoption model from HIMSS. And that's not the interesting part. The interesting part is what you see is that the, the countries that are lagging at this point in time, that are less mature at this staging, they have the opportunity to leapfrog, which can be an opportunity for them, but at the same time can also be a challenge for others. So by 2025, we will see many countries advancing their digital adoption in healthcare. And the United States will remain at the digital forefront. But it does not mean that all hospital, hospitals and health systems will, will have made this investment or even created the ability to leap in either the techno technology or even most importantly, the actual digital transformation, which is more focused on 
ways of working, process changes, and in many cases, the cultural shift to optimize these investments. So how do you stay relevant? How can you move, uh, how can you move or with or even faster than the rest of the rest of the hospitals? So if I if I summarize this, there's countries that are advancing at speed, right? So what I showed is you see countries that are at stage zero today, but in 2025 can easily leapfrog to stage five and stage six. And, and even within North America, move from five to six to seven to 2025. Not all hospital systems will be able to make that change. So that basically means that digitization can offer opportunities to improve and even grow. If it's not picked up the correct way, it can even become a threat. Because not only within your own region, your state, or even within the entire United States for that matter, all of a sudden, hospitals across state, across the country can become your competition. So how to solve that and how can, how can you find a partner or how can you organize yourselves is kind of like an approach you need to actually drive this transformation. And with that, I'd like to hand over to, to Angus, who will tell more about the actual development of smart hospitals and drive this digital transformation. Thanks, Edgar. Really appreciate it for giving us a great overview of the why. And uh, what I wanted to do now is, is start discussing the, the what and the how. Um, and so I'll, I'll start that by first um, moving to the next slide. And, and starting with, whoop, sorry, move back to the slide, to start with what is our definition of a, of a smart hospital? And from a Philips perspective, it's a hospital or smart system of care, as Edgar said, that digitizes uh, and interconnects assets of all forms of data to optimize and redesign processes. And that's certainly, you know, that redesign and optimization of the process is to achieve, of course, better patient care, uh, better experience, better outcomes, and of course, operational efficiency, very much similar to, you know, our quadruple aim goal that, that many of you, of course, are continuing to work towards. Um, but importantly, a smart hospital and the evolution of a smart hospital is really centered around data. And, it, and it's about, taking siloed, unprocessed data all the way on the left hand, as you see on the bottom right hand side of the figure, all the way to the right hand side, to making it contextualized and, and really providing actionable uh, insights uh, that really are going to be the, uh, the foundation and the catalyst for smart, agile decision making. And certainly by having those actionable insights, it enables and empowers your employees uh, at different levels of your organization to make better decisions around the operations uh, and the clinical decisions uh, for your organization. On the next slide, looks as I'm gonna have to do it down here. Sorry, bear with me as I change the slide. There it is. Um, so what is also important, very important to understand in terms of, you know, what is a smart hospital? Um, I want people to realize that there's not one size fits all for a for smart sauce, uh, hospital. There's not a silver bullet. Um, every organization is going to be slightly different. Um, yes, it does require the data and the integration that we spoke about on the previous slide. But each organization is going to be a different part of that journey. Some may have already started that journey and are very advanced. Uh, others may be starting that journey or, or halfway through. And, and from my perspective and the Phillips perspective, we don't think there's an end. It's continuous adaption, continuous improvement um, you know, to a different and, and continuously improved state. Um, when looking at Smart Hospital ranked by either Newsweek or Wired or, or newest Warden Report, although highly ranked, um, many hospitals have different value drivers uh, and different strategic differentiators some clinical, some operational, some research focused, and some very experiential. Um, and the example that I, I have here is you know, a hospital like Johns Hopkins uh, invests data and analytics and technology very differently than say a Boonramgrad in, in, in Thailand or, or a UCLA in California. Um, and, and they, based upon their strategies, based upon their differentiation, are gonna continue to do that on a, on a routine basis. Um, so, for example, on the left-hand side, um, this is an organization, Johns Hopkins, that is very much research-oriented in, in regards to their smart hospital. And they then kind of pull and invest in different levers and different uh, areas of investment. Boomerangrad, certainly more 
around the experiential, you know, certainly you know, high quality, high, high quality care, but experiential hotel-like experience for their patients that do travel uh, for care. So engaging them from their home uh, to their facility and then back to, uh, back to their home. And then UCLA, certainly a very much more rounded uh, approach to smart hospital investment. Um, is, is where they're, uh, they're looking at. So from a recommendation standpoint, um, we recommend you to continue to align your smart hospitals and your technology investment uh, with your strategy and your competitive differentiation and those levers uh, on a routine or yearly basis. When we look at smart hospitals, we look at it at a, in, a, in a very holistic manner and, and certainly across four outcome focused domains and, and many organizations as, as Edgar mentioned before, uh, look at clinical information, digitalization and under, under, uh, underlying platforms. And I think extremely important, but we want to make sure that organizations that we work with are really focused on on the operations and the outcomes and the experienced intricity, and most importantly, the innovation, the capability. So those four domains become the principles whereby we help organizations move uh, into a smart digital transformation. So from an operational efficiency perspective, you know, we're all being challenged by workforce shortages at present and um, you know, challenges around efficiency. And so smart hospitals are starting to uh, look at and leverage uh, applications and uh, automation to liberate uh, healthcare professionals from mundane or repetitive uh, tasks in order to be able to help them go back uh, to the coalface, back to um, uh, um, uh, providing the patient care that they're trained and, 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 and love. At the same time, Edgar talked about using centralized operational insights to forecast and manage demand and improve patient flow, improve efficiency and reduce length of stay. So, you know, that's where we're seeing from a, from a smart hospital perspective, uh, people focused on the operational efficiency. On the clinical side, again, it's a smart hospital helps connect patient data across different modalities and systems uh, across longitudinal care for the patient and turns those insights into, into insights to really support clinical decision-making at that point of care in, real, in a real-time manner. And as an integrated part of a wider network, uh, smart hospitals are looking at um, embracing virtual collaboration, virtual clinical collaboration and extending care across their network. Certainly remote patient monitoring to extend line of sight um, across for healthcare professionals across their network and moving beyond uh, the hospital walls. From an experience centricity standpoint, we're all aware of, of the growing consumerism within healthcare. And so smart hospitals want to be more proactive and help organize, help people become more proactive in the, in the role in the delivery of their own care. So smart hospitals are powering patients and their families with digital engagement tools throughout their care journey. And certainly, yes, digital engagement tools are important, but we're also seeing smart hospitals really create human-centric care environments to support patient care and support the, the, the well-being of their patients and most importantly, also their staff. Um, we do this from a Philips perspective in, in many of our procedural areas, whether it be in digital imaging or our cardiovascular uh, procedural suites, we have solutions around ambient experience that allow patients to take a bit more control of their environment and, and, and create a purpose-driven uh, environment for them. We're now starting to expand that into behavioral health capabilities and, and critical care capabilities. Um, our fourth component, of course, is, is innovation capability. And so becoming a smart hospital is as much about the organizational culture, the transformation and the capability building as it is about the technology. So smart hospitals develop and embed new organizational capabilities, new ways of working uh, to accept and take advantage of, uh, of technology uh, and, and, and smart digital healthcare. So you may be asking yourself, you know, where do we start or where do I go from here? Um, and, and so um, once your strategy uh, and your vision uh, has been aligned 
oh, sorry, somebody. Once your strategy and vision has been aligned uh, across the organization, it's really important then to use some foundational building blocks. And, and at Phillips, we've spent a lot of time not only thinking about those four principles uh, on the left-hand side, but we've started to think about, you know, what are the levers that help organizations kind of drive uh, towards those outcomes and drive towards those destinations. And so we've put forward then 36 core enablers that, that we believe become uh, the foundational pillars that will help you continuously uh, move towards a smart hospital, you know, move along your smart hospital journey. Um, but as you can imagine, um, and, and Philips, we, we clearly know this, we can help you in a, in, in a number of these, but it certainly takes a village. It takes a number of different partners, a number of different players um, that will be needed to support you um, in making those right investments and, and, and having the right solutions uh, and integration. So, you know, from our perspective, it's, um, you know, we are part of, the, part of the solution with you and certainly uh, you and other partners, um, you know, we're, we're comfortable and, and, and willing to work with in order to, uh, to support you along this journey. What's also important is, and I'm sorry, I think it's taking a bit longer for me. I'm sorry, Angus, I tried to remove the caption box, but I think you have to click it, yeah, here you go. There we go, okay, great. Uh, what's also important is to really have, you know, to understand the how, you know, how, how can we move along this journey? And, and for us, it, it really needs a very structured and, and stepwise approach to realizing uh, the smart hospital and digital transformation roadmap uh, for your organization. And look, it's, uh, I'm just gonna highlight three particular elements that, that we think are important. Um, and it starts with creating that, that vision, you know, making sure that your organization is aligned with that vision. And, and no doubt you, you would, probably say that you have constituents within your organization that that have a vision, um, they have an awareness, uh, but they have an awareness from their operational, their clinical or their service line perspective. So it's certainly important to allow them to have a voice of their current state and, and, and the vision of where they want to go. But it's also very important to knit that against other constituents, other service lines, other departments uh, within within your organization. And to do that, we've developed a digital health maturity assessment. And it's, so it's, a, it's an online uh, survey tool that can be used by your clinicians, can be used by your, uh, your executives and administration. And it takes you through a number of, of questions that start to answer and discuss where you are from a maturity perspective across those 36 levers and across the, those key domains and principles that we're talking about. And from that, you're able to have a really informed dialogue, understand where people are in your organization, but more importantly, start to have a discussion around the strategy and the direction for, for your digital transformation. And after that's achieved, we propose and have used in our past what we call a co-creation or smart discovery sessions where we truly solidify uh, that vision and that direction. And we do that by having a multi-day co-creation with your executives and your clinicians. And we overlay um, those opportunities and the domains and the, and the enablers across a patient journey. So we center it and anchor it in a patient journey, look at opportunities for improvement, and then determine and prioritize a, a digital transformation roadmap for you. As you can appreciate, um, on the right-hand side, um, these journeys are multifaceted and multi-year and certainly dynamic. And so from our perspective, it, it's very important to have a framework that incorporates performance management, it incorporates capability building, as we spoke about, uh, performance improvement, because of course these journeys have to provide an outcome and a return on investment, uh, and certainly um, an opportunity to continue to have strategic alignment. Um, so in this respect, we very much focus on a continuous performance loop uh, that really uh, has a, you know, a, a strong sense of learning and iteration on a year-by-year -year basis. Uh, Edgar, I'll pause there to see if there's anything that you wanted me to highlight or, or, or 
we'll focus in on. Yeah, I think what you, and I hope the message came across to, to the audience, right? So I think what you're presenting here very much is everything around technology. You need to understand from what problems are you trying to solve, trying to solve, where do you want to go? Hence, why do you want to solve certain problems? And it's not a one-step approach or an overnight change. A transformation takes multiple steps and multiple iterations. So I think the framework, what you presented here, I think is a good way of explaining as well that you know you need to go through that loop many, many times, depending how how many change and transformation elements you you have built into your plan. And um, and it's not a one size fits all. And I like the the central part, the co-create part that you explained, Angus, where yeah, the picture says it all. It's all about the people in the room that really make a difference. It's not Philips, it's not the hospital, it's really teaming up together and bringing all the subject matter experts together. Great, thanks, Edgar. Um, so in the next section, I wanted to talk about kind of elements and examples of, of a smart hospital. And, and you know, certainly from, from our perspective, uh, Philips, and, and this is a visual of a, of, of a smart hospital, um, can play you know, many parts of that digital healthcare solution and that transformation. And so these are some of the solution elements that, that we can bring to bear. Certainly, you know us from advanced diagnostics and treatments and what's important about that, both in diagnostic imaging and interventional cardiology is that we're now starting to overlay machine learning and AI uh, into those applications and into that equipment uh, to really help you move along that, uh, that continuum in terms of having contextualized uh, information. From a staff and patient experience perspective, we're you know, optimizing digital patient journeys, where we've got applications that provide patient navigation. And we certainly, as, as we spoke about earlier, uh, have solutions around ambient experiences and creating and designing um, spaces uh, that incorporate well-being. Um, from an emergency care and trauma care perspective, um, very much extending care outside the hospital into the ambulances, into the field, uh, making sure that uh, you can connect yourself through monitoring um, and, 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 and visual mechanisms uh, to the front line, to, to the patients, and being able to manage that patient care all the way through the emergency department into the procedural areas and into the ICU. On the top right hand side, certainly AI research, we partner and continue to partner with organizations around the globe, um, enabling and supporting them develop uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning uh, that then becomes a part of their technology on site, but soon, certainly then becomes a part of our pathways and our plans to continue to, to innovate moving forward. Digital pathology, as it said, uh, it's a component of uh, anatomic pathology that in the past has been very slide based, um, very labor intensive. Um, we're, we're a big player in digital pathology in terms of um, removing slides and digitalizing um, anatomical pathology, which will enhance multi um, multidisciplinary tumor boards. It'll enhance uh, clinical collaboration across the globe and certainly in, increase um, referrer satisfaction as you can communicate and, uh, and, and demonstrate and show um, diagnoses and, and pathways with, with referrers. Certainly from a virtual home care services, you know, moving care out of the hospital, moving care into the home. Uh, we have world leading uh, remote um, care platforms around cardiology and other disease cohorts. And then some of you that may also have these in your own hospitals, uh, our EICU or telehealth or telecritical care solutions that, that you can employ you know, within a hospital, across a network, with partners, with referral hospitals. Um, you know, certainly um, an example here of some of the solutions we can bring to bear. What's important about that is they're, they're underpinned with um, platforms and software that, that focus on either enterprise type offerings, uh, operational informatic offerings or seamless patient care, um, you know, with, with a number of the different uh, solutions there. So where have we been successful in, in, in helping people move along uh, this journey? So look, I'll, I'll start with a, uh, an example from South Korea. Uh, which is, as, as Edgar said, one of the countries that uh, has been at the forefront of digitalizing healthcare. 
Um, severance um, is, is one of four of the top four uh, health systems uh, in South Korea. And just like many of us, they had a goal of increasing their geographical reach. They wanted to build a new smart digital hospital um, well outside Seoul, but you know, had the concerns around, can we keep up the operational, the clinical um, capabilities that, uh, that, that we're known for uh, in Seoul? And so um, they employed us to help that facilitation, help build and develop a, a roadmap. And as you can see here again, uh, another photo of uh, a co-creation or a multidisciplinary co-creation session where we helped them with the vision. So there were clinicians and executives from the new future hospital, existing hospitals, existing networks. How do we collaborate together to, to make sure that we can achieve uh, the goals that we're trying to achieve? Um, and yes, this was certainly centered on um, uh, you know, supporting and extending clinical care from the main hospital. Uh, but as you can imagine, within a new hospital, they had the opportunity to uh, find not only Philips, but third party uh, digital solutions that, that helped and enabled them to, uh, uh, to build and grow a hospital that's now um, capturing uh, additional market share for them. If you would look at this, Angus, uh, sure. just one question, right? So maybe on behalf of the audience, right? So, if, so this is a room, it's interesting to see you're on the top left on the screen, you're in there with a younger version of Mr. Cameron. Um, if you would ask the hospital today, right? So what for them did they achieve by engaging uh, in this, this multidisciplinary co-create and working on the smart hospital concept with, uh, with us? Yeah, look, I, I, I think they achieve what they wanted to achieve, Edgar, from um, from extending clinical capability and efficiency from the, the main hospital and, and, and keeping, I guess, the, the image and, and, and the, the right presence uh, for, for severance in their new Yongin hospital. I, I think what they kind of came back to me a couple of years later, which is why we've now incorporated innovation capability and, and you know, developing purposefulness and empowerment and, and, and process changes that they still felt as though they had a lot of equipment, a lot of digital technology that they weren't utilizing to the best ability uh, that they could. So I think from, a, from an overarching goal perspective, they can tick some boxes, but they realize they can go even further and bring that also back into, into their other hospitals. So I think that capability building is probably an area that uh, you know we're, we're starting to work with them on now. Okay, thanks. The next example, again, um, Southeast Asian and Korean examples um, is Royal Mandai Hospital from, from Jakarta. And it was opened uh, uh, last year. Uh, and, and this was, a you know, I guess a, a great opportunity for, um, you know, to realize the vision of, of their owner and their, and their CEO, Dr. Ben, um, to really create, and you can see on the quote there, a patient-centered and completely differentiated hospital. Um, and, you know, I know we don't get too many opportunities in, in the States here to, to build new hospitals, but this provided a, a great opportunity for him to, um, you know, as, as best he possibly can, you know, create something different uh, in the marketplace. And, you know, he's starting to achieve that. I mean, he has really begun to attract patients in, in Jakarta and across Indonesia that normally would have traveled to Singapore or, or other more advanced uh, healthcare uh, countries. And, and now he's, he's capturing that volume. So he's capturing uh, additional patients. He's also capturing clinicians, you know, leading clinicians that want to be a part uh, of this hospital and, and, and be a part of, the, of what he's developed and, and, and implemented there. And certainly from a referrals perspective, um, due to his ability to provide remote care, virtual care, and his other digital solutions, um, he's able to, you know, continue to grow and develop uh, um, a market and the geography, uh, not just in Jakarta, but uh, across uh, Indonesia. And so let me now kind of bring you a little bit closer to home. And, and this is not a new hospital. Um, so we're doing work with uh, Yale uh, New Haven, um, and, and they were starting to look at smart hospital technologies and, and wanted to, 
determine and understand how those technologies or digitalization um, could inform and improve their care pathways and the future design of hospitals, wards or brownfields, if, if they so choose to do that, both from a physical uh, and a process perspective. And so together we uh, develop Project Virtual and uh, Project Virtual used a similar co-create user-based um, methodology uh, to really understand the workflows, these key eight workflows, but also create a current and a future state visualization. And so we're using their footprint, their, their current floor plans, uh, but in the environment are able to uh, picture and, and envision and you can you know, move into just like a, you know, a real estate kind of platform, move into different rooms and move along corridors and, uh, and, in, and pathways. Um, to really determine you know, what future care could look like and, and what technologies could be there. And so importantly about that, there's also 76 content hotspots identified by those little kind of circles and the dots. And they allow you to really interrogate, investigate the technology. And so once you do that, um, it'll open up in the same environment. It'll talk about the technology itself. It'll talk about potential benefits. Uh, it'll have the vendors uh, that can provide uh, technology or similar technology. Um, and so again, I think this is a, another wonderful example of how without building uh, anything um, bricks and mortar, um, organizations are working with us to, to, to help and develop what that future would look like and start to uh, incorporate those uh, in, into, their, into their current perspective. Yeah. Um, what I like so about this example, as well, Angus, is very much is uh, it. A lot of people say, "Well, you think about smart hospital, you need to build something new, right?" But actually, you know, this is a great example of how do you leverage what's already there? You build on the successes that are there, and you want to improve it, and you start with a digital environment where you can do it on a computer screen. But even you can go as far as like this. This model even has been developed. You can put on an, a virtual reality uh, yeah. glasses on, so you can walk through the hospital and you can flip between, "Hey, this is how it looks today, and how do the future looks." Um, and what I like about that part, besides that it, it, it's a cool, it's a cool tool and a cool gadget. What it also does, it 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 already allows the clinicians and and the nursing staff to see what the future could look like, so they can, you know, uh, reflect on it, provide their inputs and and all this kind of thing. So the change management actually already starts with a digital model like this, and that's I think one of the big benefits uh, of of the model. Yep, exactly. Well, thank you, Edgar. Let me hand it back to you to provide a bit of a summary before we go into uh, q and a yeah thanks angus um i hope you know for the audience it was clear uh, uh what we're trying to achieve or we're trying to share around smart hospital and that by moving closer to a smart hospital concept or a smart system of care uh, and by utilizing data contextualized uh, that helps to achieve you know more operational and clinical and strategic goals ultimately i think on the left hand side i really want to emphasize you need to have a holistic perspective if you think about transforming. If you think about a smart hospital or digital transformation, it's not one axis on the technology. Technology is really important, but it's only about 20 to 25 percent of the effort of a successful transformation. The majority of it is about processes and culture. And within culture, of course, it's about the people. And if you then look at the left side of the slide where you have the, 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 the lens of operational efficiency, how do we work together? How does the workflow? On the clinical side, you know, how do we provide the care? What procedures do we need when and how? What's the sequence of that? And if you then look, what innovation capability do you need? And I'm not talking about just what's the latest and greatest technology. Now, how do you create an organizational culture that has the ability to adopt to that technology and integrate it into the previous two operational and the clinical excellence type of aspects? And then ultimately, you want to drive it from an experience perspective. How do you improve the experience for staff and for the patients. And I think only these four lenses together drive the complexity of a digital transformation and moving closer to a smart hospital with a lot of different benefits, potential benefits. And ultimately, it's not something everybody can do by themselves. Typically, what you see, it's all about collaborating, collaboration in multidisciplinary teams and creating a multi year plan and learn together and improve together. So with that, I would like to turn it off to the Q&A.
Well, and thank you yeah. so much, Edgar and Angus, for that very engaging and solution-focused discussion. While you, while you were speaking, we received um, several questions from our attendees. So let's try to get to as many of them as possible before the end of the event. Yeah. Um, I will start off with kind of a fun one, um, which there might be kind of a broad answer to. What is considered the smartest hospital to date globally and where is it located? You might not just have one answer, but do you have, do you each have a, uh, a favorite pick? Well, I'm, I'm happy to, to lead uh, Edgar and, and I mentioned it kind of in, in our, um, uh, in the presentation, you know, you look at Newsweek or US News and World Report or Wired, you know, everyone's going to have a different e example. And I, and, and, I, and I think it goes back to my question. I, I think I'm not sure whether there's one, um, but I think it's, it has to be the one that best matches their strategy and their, and, and, and their desires and, and their clinical differentiation. So again, you'll look at a Mayo, you'll look at a, a Johns Hopkins that, that seem to always be on, on top of on top of those lists from a, from a European example, Karolinska uh, comes to mind. So uh, again, uh, different people will evaluate things differently. Um, so there's a number of lists, but I, but I think, you know, importantly, it needs to be the one that matches their strategic endeavors and, and, and their uh, differentiation the most. Yeah, and I fully agree with that. It's 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 you. It's impossible to say who is the best smart hospital because ultimately the definition of smart and the definition of success on digital, you know, differs very much on the needs that are that are that yeah the needs that are present in that in that local situation. Um, I think uh, maybe in a few years from now, when it becomes more standardized, there's more hospitals stepping up the plate. When there's these assessments that I showed, for example, the HIMS DM assessment, you know, the adoption curve. There's more and more hospitals that really are going through these type of assessments and 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 mat maturity assessments. Then the comparison might be easier to be made uh, on a hospital level, uh, and from that perspective, you know, we might be able to pick one. Uh, but then, of course, everybody has to do the same assessment in order to make sure you can you get to the same uh, to the same list. Maybe we should put our assessment out there, Edgar. And come up <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, now let's move on to one about another very hot topic that's relevant to um, uh, this discussion, which is cybersecurity. So what, what are your concerns that in the conversion to, to become smart hospitals um, about those hospitals becoming prey to cyber threats beyond just EMRs? Will being will being smart make those facilities inherently more vulnerable to threats? I can uh, I can I can I can take this one to to start. Um, of course, once you start to connect more together online, you know, uh, without taking the right precautions, you will become more vulnerable. Of course, when you start thinking about a smart hospital and become more connected, where you have a flow of data between systems, between um, yeah uh, locations, maybe even. Um, you need to make sure that cybersecurity is an integral part of the design of your smart hospital. Uh, and it might be go a little bit too detailed, but in all, ultimately what you, you, you don't want to do is just have a, an open connection to the internet, right? So, of course, you need to make sure you have the right governance and the right security settings on each device that is connected, on each informatic system or, or, or medical device that, that, that has an ability to gather data, store data. Uh, and then you will also need to make sure wherever you store the data, even if it's on premises or even when you leverage the cloud, all of these have their own different security levels and security uh, security uh, measurements that are that are needed. And I think when when we look at smart hospital, this is an integral part of a design. We really look at the current information management. We look at the infrastructure and of course the security that is present. And a hospital most of the time already have you know a security protocol in place so we'll have to benchmark it and see okay how does it match and what does what potential changes are needed in the future to make sure that that security policy can grow with it in the ever increasing complexity of the digital landscape but for me it goes without saying that you know security cyber security but even other types of security um, is, is of the utmost importance uh, and not even thinking about also as well, particularly on the privacy part, right? So not even a hack cybersecurity, but also who gets access even within the hospital, which 
employee gets access to what information because not everybody should have access to every patient information that is out there. Great answer. And obviously something that's on the minds of everybody who works Absolutely. Um, with hospitals. So we've two, we've um, had a number of questions about two very big issues um, uh, that are impacting hospitals. One concerns the financial environment and one concerns um, how to get, how to, to find the time to actually implement some of these um, changes. So on the, on the financial end of things, obviously all hospitals are under incredible financial pressure, especially rural hospitals, um, many of which are closing right now because of financial pressures. So how do hospitals um, uh, make these changes affordable to become smart hospitals? And how do they find the time to, to implement these, these um, changes? Yeah. Well, that's a very good one. I think it's it, a good to, question. Yeah. to start off, to start off, I think ultimately, as as I hope we, we try to say, that there's a lot, a lot of different elements that come to play when you think about smart hospital. But the, the transformation towards quote unquote your version of the smart hospital is not a big bang, right? So if you don't have the resource, don't have the time or the money to do everything, and you know, start small, start with the little ones. So ultimately what the engagement framework that Angus was showing, one of the main reasons we do that is to truly understand when we do what we call our discovery phase, we go really deep in the data analysis and the observation interviews. We help prioritize which quote unquote little change, but which change has the biggest impact. And depending on the availability of people or resources or even time or even the sense of urgency determines on the backlog, which one do we pick up first? And you first do one, go to the circle, iterate and see, did it bring the, the expected value and the outcome? And then you go to the second and third. So by, and then ultimately by the return on investment of the first to third initiative, you can build the traction and also create even room in terms of time or money to go to the third, fourth and fifth initiative within the digital transformation. And that's also why I said, if you go, if you drive a transformation of that scale towards a smart hospital, that's a multi-year engagement. That's not something new in one year or two years. That you know, we're we're talking to customers who have like a seven-year plan to really move more toward to realize their smart hospital vision. And I can already tell you, two and a half years from now, or maybe even a year from now, that that seven-year vision, what they think they need in year seven, might already change because of the changes, what happens going on on in the world, you know, what's going on in technology, what what things are available. But only that roadmap helps determine to prioritize to do what has the biggest impact uh, in in the, in the local context. And what your health system can afford, obviously. Yeah, but no, there exactly. are solutions for every scale of 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 financial commitment. Yeah, exactly, because in, in in a lot of cases, um, when you think about digital transformation, maybe the start is not to buy more stuff buy more software or hardware sometimes is how do we leverage what is already out there yeah right so so and basically if you do leverage it more i'm talking about you can do an intervention person process change protocol changes right or think what hey we already have data but it doesn't we can't leverage use that much right now so mm -hmm. that doesn't mean you need to build a completely new information system with data it's more like how do you visualize it so we can pull data and help you visualize it and make it more insightful so those are relatively smaller interventions that can already help drive your change and transformation by just those insights and free up time for your staff to have more time for the patients and even also more time to drive the next phase in the transformation. Fantastic. I really love this next question. Um, given the fact that we've had a revolution during the pandemic on where care is delivered, it's now being delivered outside of traditional healthcare environments. So this question is, are we shifting? So the question is, have you worked on smart community or community-based healthcare projects to make it more smart, either outside of a non-traditional environment or with traditional health systems working with community partners to deliver care in a more, in a more, on a more safe platform? Um, I, I, I can jump into that. I mean, yes, we've been asked to, you know, come and be a part of, you know, smart 
ecosystems and you know smart cities and and mm -hmm. and you know that definitely involves you know how do you play with community partners and and all of the different types of providers um, in you know in in the space and the ecosystem. Um, I, I you know we've dabbled. I would say it's not something that we've jumped wholeheartedly into. Um, unfortunately, Philips is still a very somewhat hospital centric. Um, organization, we're moving faster and faster, as you see from our solutions into the home, into the community. So I think it's only a matter of time where projects like this start to really become much more focused on system of care and yep. system of care in terms of partners to deliver that care uh, in a community um, home-based manner and uh, is gonna be just paramount and, and will become very evident very shortly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's absolutely right. And to build on that, we have different pilots running around the globe in different countries, including in North America. When you think about partnering with pharmacies uh, in, in 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 Eastern Europe, we even have uh, partnerships running with governments in terms of like where you combine almost primary care and do the first intake even before before people go to a hospital. Um, so we have different, yeah, uh, uh, um, bright stars and bright spots on where we team up with partners. Um, but to Angus's point, it's not something we do at scale yet. Uh, it's also because the question is not out there. Every, not every country or every partner is ready for that yet. Uh, so we're kind of like growing along with the demand that goes there. And also for ourselves, what role to play in and how do we make our solutions fit into these different care settings? I was going to say Africa has some wonderful examples yeah. of, of where yeah. we've worked okay. with well. governments um, in providing that community frontline care um, yeah. remote yeah. from a hospital. Well, I think we are getting close to time. Thank you for fitting in all those questions. We do have, we did have a few that we couldn't get to, um, but I would like to thank all of the attendees for participating in this event and for submitting questions and to our wonderful panelists for such, for, for tackling such an important subject. It's clearly of great interest to everyone on the panel. Um, now in closing, um, we would like to remind you to complete the evaluation um, that is going to appear on your screen when you exit the webinar program. Hope you all have a great day and thank you again for attending. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.